Dorothy Ann Bryant on a wet February afternoon and I'm meandering from Welsh Mill Weir and I'm hoping to meet Mark, would you introduce yourself? Yes, I'm uh, Mark Vose. I'm a GP here in Froome and I'm a member of Froome's Missing Link. Missing Link? What's yes. that? Yes, that's right, Missing Link. So where we're a group that's been formed to try to complete the cycle path, uh, which currently goes stops about two and a half miles outside of the town. There's a rather dangerous two-mile section between Froome and the traffic-free route to Radstock, and we're a group that have got together and we are determined to, uh, to complete a traffic-free route from here to connect into the Sustrans network. Wonderful. Well, I've cycled from the centre of town to Welshville, and then it's rather more difficult, though I walk along this very muddy, very narrow path, but I see you're doing something to make it wider. Yes, that's right. Here we are at uh, Welsh Mill, and uh, this is the start of uh, our intended cycle path. We've been here just clearing up a little bit and trying to get access. We've got a planning application in for this area, the first part of our cycle path. And in order for that to go ahead, although we've been granted planning permission, there are a number of conditions. Some of the conditions are more detailed measurements. So we've been on site trying to clear back some of the undergrowth, the brambles and the weeds and the branches and little saplings so that we can actually get in and take the measurements that are required to be able to complete the cycle path and the planning oh, application. really? I thought it was the first step to making it with all these uh, cleared away and the stumps and so on. Well, wouldn't that be wonderful? We, before we can actually make the, uh, the start, we have to have the full planning permission from our district authority and that requires a lot more detailed measurement to complete the applications. Yes, work will start just as soon as we've got those final boxes ticked and all the forms in and all this the This sounds a very long and tedious. You must have been very happy to get out here on Saturday and actually wield some tools and... <laughs> well, you know, it's wonderful, isn't it? I mean, this is a project which we are determined to be a community project. So this is one of those things where we as a group want to make sure that the community do it for themselves and it's not something that's done to the community so I think to be able to get our volunteers out and albeit on a, a rather cold day uh, and to start clearing some and actually for people to see that uh, there is something that they can do to get involved uh, I think is really good and the enthusiasm that we saw on Saturday was wonderful really and I think you know when you're a group that has spent years trying to get this off the ground you start to lose a little bit of enthusiasm a little bit of will and when you see volunteers turning up to say do you know what we agree with you this is a fantastic project it really charges your batteries up and makes you feel yeah actually this is worthwhile my husband Andrew came along and had a great time he really enjoyed himself how many of volunteers did you have all together? We had about 12 volunteers on Saturday. We kept the group small because it's quite a small area. Previous um, chain gangs, as we call them, have been up to 40 people and when we've had a, a bigger site to work on. And we hope we'll attract those numbers in the future. So Andrew and I will go along with our invalid buggies when we're elderly. No, we're hoping to actually cycle along it. Is there any chance or is it going to be a 10-year project? Well, um, I think you'll definitely be cycling along this section. There's no doubt about that. We have the planning permission and, you know, we've got some funding, so we will be making a start. You know, perhaps the, the out-of-town bit may take a little bit longer. I don't think it's going to take 10 years, but it may take longer. But I think, you know, if you are unfortunate to need an invalid buggy, then, you know, we are designing this route for people with uh, disability because this is access for all. So it's not just your, your cyclists in Lycra. It is for people, you know, young people, uh, children, people with children, people walking, and people with disability, so it's going to be friendly for wheelchairs and so on so I think you know it's a sort of an open access multi-user route really and as you know the the views over the river here in the centre of room are wonderful so yes. there's plenty to see and uh, plenty to attract people. The You've left a line of trees 
on both sides. We have indeed, and you know, really the only sort of clearance has been the sort of undergrowth itself rather than anything major. There are unfortunately a couple of trees that you can see behind you there uh, that will have to come out. And the reason for that, they are absolutely in the middle of where the root will be. So unfortunately, those will have to come out. Uh, but other than that, wherever possible, you know, we are trying to maintain the, the natural uh, growth. We're also trying to make sure that we provide habitat for uh, wildlife. So we're not taking material away from site. We are piling it neatly into uh, wildlife habitat. You know, there's no point in having a route like this and then taking away the possibility of seeing all the things that people want to come and see. You know, it's, it's about trying to provide a route that has got something of interest on it for people to use. But the fence is also coming nearer and nearer the river. Yes, that's, that's a bit of an issue, isn't it, really? I mean, a fence will be rerouted. It'll be recited either here or somewhere else. Of course, it's very historical, if rather decrepit. Yes, I think it'll require a little bit of work to upgrade it. We do need fencing along a route, so if it's not here, it will be in another part of the route. OK, let's uh, walk along a bit, squeeze between the tree and the fence that's... What's this building here? This is R Rosetti House. It's the new nursing home that's been built in Froome. Actually, what's really interesting about this is that uh, the owners of R Rosetti House have actually been very supportive of the project. And the fence here is an example of uh, one of the challenges that we've had to face along this route. So I don't know if you can see its current location provides quite a sort of squeeze point to the route. But there's about two foot between it and the other fence, and then it plunges down to the river so yes it is a squeeze point it is a squeeze point and you know given the fact that this route was always identified as a multi-user route so it was always going to be a route that for cyclists uh, it's rather frustrating to us that uh, planning permission was granted for this building and the fence put in that particular location and there wasn't a sort of an insistent for the fence to move back and for more space and that's one of the challenges that you face with these sort of projects unfortunately the plan application was complex and that couldn't be managed but you know what's really interesting is that when through missing link got involved and we approached the owners of Rosetti house directly and said you know what it would be a really positive thing for the local population if you were to move your fence back a meter and a half and allow a cycle path through then actually they thought about it and said you know I think you're right that would be a good thing and we are prepared to support you that's great isn't it it's absolutely wonderful because you know they're they're moving the fence back at their cost they're actually giving the land to the, the cycle route at no cost this uh, land here belongs to them does it uh, the land that will be created when the, the, the fence moves back belongs to them let's well, move on and have a look you can see here the end of the black fence the wire fence here will be moved back to create more space and the land that, that's exposed will then be handed to the cycle path you know, and I think that's really generous. It's really interesting, isn't Very it? Very encouraging. Well, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, our planning authorities couldn't make it happen. They couldn't protect this route for, for the population of the town. But uh, a volunteer group were able to approach um, a commercial organisation and together come up with a solution that was of the benefit of the population of this town without any cost. And I think that's a sort of a wonderful story and, and something for us all to think about when we want to sort of uh, think about getting involved in voluntary activities, just shows what you can achieve. Great. OK, let's move on. I think one of the other things just to mention is that when we built the cycle path, obviously we will be tarmacking this part of the route because it's just prone to, to exposure and you can see itself how muddy it is. So not only Yes, be... sometimes when I risk assess this path, I can't bring health walkers along here. So we're going to have to put stone down but also put tarmac. And again, the owners of Rossetti House have actually said that they would be prepared to give us some support in that area, which is wonderful, isn't it? So not only prepared to work with us, give up the land, but also make a contribution towards the building costs, I think, as a really shining example of commercial support for community projects. Excellent. Well, the risk assessment is today, but uh. I did have some safety ropes in the car if you need them. <laughs> oh, right. Yes, Andrew said the risk assessment for the bit where you were working on Saturday is don't trip over the little stumps. <laughs> ah, so here quite a lot of trees have come down. What's 
the story of this. OK, now, now we've moved to the next door neighbours and this is the area of the old gas works. So this is work which is, is redevelopment of the gas works and there's going to be some, some dwellings, I think, built onto this site. Again, it's quite interesting because being a gas works, it's prone to contamination. The, the owners of the site have got to clear any contamination. But the interesting story here is that, once again, there wasn't a clear thing within the planning permission that there was a cycle path going through here. You know, there was a right-of-way, a footpath. But we approached the developer of this land and said, you know, we are very keen to get a cycle path through. And the developer said, you know, I'm very keen to support a cycle path coming through. He has offered us support. And when they do finally clear and level the land, they are going to be levelling this part of the route to allow the cycle path to come through. So much of the construction of the cycle path, this sort of main levelling of land, will be done by the developer of this piece of land, which I think is, again, really wonderful, really nice story. As he said, the additional cost for them is, is small. The contribution that they've made to the town and the population is wonderful and helps us in making the route actually happen. And, of course, if they have houses here, the people who live here will really appreciate your path. Absolutely, and hopefully it will encourage anyone who lives in these houses to, to adopt sustainable travel, uh, to get into the centre of the town and to get around the town, because they will have you know, a ready route right outside their door. Let's move on. It's very interesting because this is very familiar to me, but it's just com changed completely since I last came. We're now walking between a steep bank and the remains of a wall. Was this full height earlier? Yeah, this was the outside wall of one of the buildings that was the gasworks. The other interesting thing is that the fence has now become gas pipes on the other side. Are you going to move them and make a gas pipe fence for his? <laughs> what a good idea. <laughs> We're now coming up to the railway. So I gather getting to talk to the owners of the railway is much more difficult than Rossetti House or the developers. Yes, it's interesting that, isn't it? Network Rail, they're responsible for the infrastructure of the railway. They have a national policy of trying to support organisations like Sustrans wherever possible. So, you know, on one hand they are positive, but as you can imagine, with any national organisation that came from a nationalised industry, their rule sets are very very complicated and everything has to be in triplicate one of the sort of limiting factors here is the bit of land underneath the railway bridge is owned by network rail and we need to upgrade the footpath to a, a bridleway for it to be a cycle path in order to attract the funding from natural england and as a rule set uh, network rail don't uh, like to support upgrades of rights of way on their land so we're in the middle of a sort of uh, discussion around that and getting uh, replies to correspondence can be challenging but um, we're working on it there's a train coming now this is one of the quarry trains coming past you can see oh right it's Hanson's on it so you can see it's um, they're quite slow moving and we'll be cycling alongside this so we're going to get used to the quarry line because our route goes right alongside the the railway not just here, but later on. Later on. But it will be exciting for cyclists from other parts of the country to see our quarry trains coming past, won't it? Well, I think so, and it's part of the local history, isn't it? You know, I think quarries have been in this part of the world for, for many, many years, and it's part of our rich industrial heritage. So to be cycling alongside that, well, I think would be a really good thing. So keep those gas pipes in your... <laughs> In do your you, fence. Do you know what? I'm going to write that down when I get back. I'm going to make sure the gas pipes are included in the fence. So we've now come out to... Well, this is the, um, the access road to Wessex Waters uh, Treatment Centre. We're just crossing that now and we're going into the land which is Froome Town Council land. So they bought from Mendit District Council that is uh, alongside Waylands. The footpath goes alongside the river, as you're probably familiar with. Our route is a little bit higher up and it goes alongside the, the side of the field. So, Yes, it did worry me to think about going round that very sharp corner by the river 
Well, later on, where the footpath goes uh, right by the river and is very narrow, it wasn't possible for us to, uh, to put the cycle path in there. There was a wall on one side and there was the bank on the other side, so, and we weren't allowed to do construction on the bank. So we're going to go from, from here, we're going to go alongside the, the field, and we're going to go across to the, the path that already exists in front of the houses in Waylands, and then up the side of those houses. It's a little bit unfortunate that it's a, a slightly steep section, so it won't be quite so easy for those people with uh, disability. However, they can take the route that goes along the footpath, which is a, a longer route and is more level. It's only a short section, and then it will allow us to have access to the farmer's field, and we have the support of that farmer to go along the side of their field and the side of the river at the Kissing Gate. So here we are in Wayland and the, the houses whose doors open onto a tarmac path. So the plan is that we will widen this path so that people can walk and cycle at the same time make it safe for people to come out of their houses so it will be widened and then tarmacked over. You can see at the far end there there's a street light that street light is right in the middle of our route so that's going to have to be moved back. Uh, the good news about that is that we've had the offer of donation from one of the county councillors, their health fund, to pay for that street light to oh, be moved great. back so, yes. so thank you to Peter Johns for his contribution to that I think a small grant can make a lot of difference yes. if it's the right thing. Absolutely, and something you could definitely see, you're getting value for money, you can see a return for it. So uh, we appreciate that, and that's just going to allow us to get through the route. And it's at that point which you can see the footpath goes down to the right and alongside the river, and our route there turns left and goes up the slope. Let's go. Let's go. Well, this is very interesting to see a familiar path through new eyes. <laughs> yes, and you can see here there was obviously a play park at, uh, at one time, so it'll be really interesting to bring activity to this part of the route again. I think it's going to be wonderful because it's going to open up a sustainable route right into the centre of the town for the people, not just in Waylands, but I think also Watcom and Upper Watcom and all those areas there. Because although you can get round the, the footpath on the side of the road, this will bring a cycle route through, so I think that's going to be really interesting. I think the other interesting thing is that when we, we complete this part of the route, which will be along to low water, we will have a route from Asda to low water, which is largely traffic free. There's a bit of crossing the road. So for those people who perhaps you know, haven't got the ability to cycle out um, eight or ten miles into the countryside, maybe that will be enough for them to make a start on cycling. People with young family, as I said, people with disability will make a quite a pleasant walk and somewhere to take people in wheelchairs and so on. So I think it's going to be a very useful route from that point of view. You can see here the footpath goes down to the right and where the white sign is over there and dives down to the side of the river. And as you said earlier, it's quite a narrow winding route alongside the wall the, with the bank falling away a little bit. So we're going to go up this way and you can see on this corner the route goes up the hill. It's not a steep slope, but um, you know, is a, a significant slope. We'll be widening this, so we'll be widening some of the undergrowth on the side here to improve visibility. We'll be putting in some barriers halfway along here to make sure that cyclists don't speed down the hill and when people come in from the access road, they come in safely. So that's all going to be thought through. And then when they get to the top, they'll be crossing the, uh, the private road into the small group of houses and then out into the field, which we're going to have a look at in a moment moment. You see there's enough land here. Look. And a lot yes, of just yes. Rubbish, really. on yeah. the right there's a sort of bank with scrubby growth and the remains of a hedge but yes there's plenty of room to be wider so you will have to stop cyclists from going too fast down this hill. Yes, you will, but I mean, we're working with Sustrans and there's a national cycle organisation. They've got plenty of ideas for that. You know, you can easily put in a chicane to, to slow the cyclist down. So I think all those people, things are surmountable. And this little road here goes down to a few interesting houses on the corner near the river. That's right. So these are the, this is low water. Uh, there's a few individual houses and the uh, remains, and one of them's the farm for this area. That's a private road, so we'll be crossing this. And you can see here where there's a private access to the field. Our cycle route will go, go into there. So we'll go through the, 
the gate now. So currently there are footpaths, many, many footpaths along here for lots of historic reasons. There's lots of different footpaths, so we'll be bringing some of those together onto one sensible route. So in fact, the farmer might be quite pleased. Well, you know, it's quite interesting, isn't it, when you look at uh, landowners and their uh, different responses to supporting something like this. Some of the landowners have been uh, less enthusiastic uh, than others to, uh, to allow us access to the land or to even allow us to upgrade what is a right-of-way anyway. These particular landowners are interesting because when we approached them, they said, do you know, it's something we would love to do. And actually, they were in our work party on Saturday, clearing the undergrowth, really supporting us and, and helping us to get towards their lands. Well, it just is really interesting, isn't it, how different a response you can get from people. Yes. <laughs> I think some of the frustrations about this sort of route is when you're dealing with authorities, and uh, you know right. I think that can be that can be a different thing, you know. And uh, particularly, they're trying to stand up for everybody and not actually getting involved in what it's like to walk along here and do things. Yeah, I think that um, they have a lot of rule sets, and I think those rule sets, some of them are, are guided from national guidance, some of them are, are local, some of them are just individual. Um, and um, as a volunteer, you're not aware of those rule sets, and they can be quite challenging. And uh, sometimes one feels that you are treated the same as if you were a commercial organisation. You know, it feels like it would be no different if we were trying to get planning permission for a factory or for a new supermarket. Uh, but we are a different organisation, you know, we are a very small group of volunteers without significant funding who are trying to put together a project for the benefit of the population, supported by the population, and I think, you know, one would have hoped that you would be treated differently, supported, encouraged, directed, and rather have your hand held as you move forward, um, and that's not always the case. Though I suppose somebody has to keep an eye that you aren't a group that get carried away with unrealistic or even harmful ideas. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And, you know, and I would want any sort of uh, responsible authority to do that because, you know, as we, as we know, there's lots of different groups on there and there's some of those have got conflicting interests. I guess it's how you do it, isn't it? You know, you can do it in a, well, produce your plans and if it's something that we agree with, we'll, we will let it go forward. And if it's not, we'll send you back to the drawing board is one option. Another is to say, well, you know, it's interesting and it's the sort of thing we'd want to support. Let's help you and let's help you move forward. And what else can we do to make it happen? Um, I think those are sort of quite different, and I think, uh, you know, we would, we would welcome the latter, I guess. Right. <laughs> Let's move on a bit. Can't really see much, but I think that's the access to the pipes that are going across there, you see. Oh, yes, sort of interesting ironwork and, and a locked uh, gate. A locked gate and a ladder going down. Yes, I don't think I want to go there. <laughs> This is a very fascinating style up here, made of two stones with a narrow space between them, isn't it? Yeah, it's really wonderful, isn't it? And I think it's, um, it's wonderful to see that sort of variety of different things, isn't it? Whether they're styles or kissing gates or, you know, these, I don't know what you'd call it. Would you call it like a pinch point or something like that? Something like that. But you're not going to be able to take a cycle path through there, are you? No, you won't take a cycle, cycle through there specifically. But, you know, you can have that alongside your cycle route, couldn't you? And you can use it in other ways. I don't think it's something that uh, should be lost. I think that's the most important thing. Although I think it's probably concrete, actually, rather than two stones, isn't it? Possibly it is, but... <laughs> well, that's stone anyway, isn't it? Rather nice concrete. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Decorative concrete. <laughs> Interesting concrete. <laughs> Let's, shall, we, shall we squeeze our way through the concrete? We ought to, oughtn't we? Although most people seem to have gone round the side your whole life mission to bring health to people, is it? 
<laughs> well, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, I, uh, I got involved in this project because uh, we were trying to uh, change the, the shape of our organisation as a medical practice. We were trying to move towards health promotion and uh, prevention rather than uh, you disease don't mean management. You health prevention, do you? No, sorry, disease prevention. But um, health promotion and pre preventative uh, medicine rather than, um, you know, sort of diagnose, just diagnosing illness and treating chronic disease and the reason for that is because we feel that uh, you know there's a driver nationally that uh, if we're going to sort of be able to manage healthcare in a cost-effective way we have to try to get the population to take some responsibility for their health we have to deal with obesity and we have to deal with sedentary lifestyle and um, you know I, I started cycling myself and then I saw that there was a group trying to bring the cycle route into the center of town and I thought what a good idea one of my uh, interests is I've got a, another group in town who are interested in providing bicycles on a, on a prescription basis. So the idea is that a charity will have a small number of bicycles and we as doctors will prescribe cycling to patients. They'll go down to the group and they'll hand over their prescription. They'll get six borrowings of a bicycle and they'll go out on the route and hopefully after those six borrowings of a bicycle they'll say, do you know, this is something that I could do more of and something that uh, interests me and uh, they will get uh, encouraged to actually go out get a bike and do more exercise themselves. Excellent and I hope you'll prescribe some health walks too. Well of course you know we're already promoting the health walks and uh, what's really exciting is that uh, the, from March the, uh, some of the health walks will be starting at our new medical centre in our health eating cafe so um, I think that's going to be really good so we do, uh, we do promote the health walks, we have them on our information screens and we hand out leaflets and we've got a patient information centre where they're promoted from so I think that's that's really really good. We are also going to be uh, funding an outdoor gym which will I think it's probably going to be put on the agricultural showground, on the tea showground. Um, so there'll be a route around there for people to walk and use um, e exercise equipment. So I think that's something that's uh, going to be quite useful. Um, I think the more that we can do to promote um, health and well-being, the better it is. And I think, you know, the, there's an interesting bit at, alongside that, isn't it? That as you get people out of their cars and you get them walking and you get them cycling, then the whole thing about sustainability um, starts. To, to become more obvious to people because they start to say, do you know what, it wasn't that difficult to cycle to work, to cycle into town, to cycle to, to see my friends. It wasn't that difficult to, to walk with the children to school. And actually, maybe I'll do that. Maybe not every day, but maybe some of the days I'll do it. And then, you know, we start to build a sustainable future. And as we get more people out of their cars, then actually maybe bit by bit, the walking and cycling environment becomes more pleasant and and that encourages more people and and you see each other walking you see each other cycling we talk to each other yes it's wonderful isn't it do you know do you know I I, I I walked back from the medical center two weeks ago and I realized you know it's the first time I've ever walked to the medical center in the last 22 years oh um, no <laughs> and it took me 12 minutes and uh, on the way back I met my neighbor and I chatted to my neighbor on the hill included in the 12 minutes and I just thought why haven't I done this this more often well of course I haven't done it because I've always thought I have to have a car because I have to go out to emergencies but you know even I can actually see that there are other ways and uh, you know I think you know I've started walking more I've started cycling more and I think there are things that we can do to be organized in a different way and as a, a medical practice we are doing that and I think you will see more of us out visiting on our bikes and visiting and walking to work and cycling to work thank you very much Dr Mark Rose.